Good morning, everyone. May 2nd, 2020, day number 20 of my furlough period. We're ending up week number three. Today, we're going to tackle redemptions, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But first, if you can give me a huge favor, I have a personal goal of being at 200 subscribers by Monday morning. I'm at 195 right now. So if you could hit that, that subscribe button right there, not redemption button, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, let's get to redemptions. So before we talk about redemptions, let's talk about yesterday. And I cannot believe how forgetful I am. I actually went to Lowe's yesterday. I had to pick up a few things. I'm gonna to try to transform uh, a flower bed we have here in the uh, backyard today if the rain holds off. And I talked about it on two different videos and I got in line with my cart. And keep in mind the, the line at Lowe's for the garden section is, is rather deep these days. Uh, I didn't pick up a weeding tool. I completely forgot to look for one when I was there. So I don't know how I talk about it on two different shows, uh, talk about it multiple times when I'm here at my house, and yet I go to Lowe's and I don't pick it up. So I'm still without a weeding tool. I cannot find it. I'm pretty, like I said yesterday, I'm pretty certain that it is uh, gone. It's in waste management's compost uh, pile now. Hopefully that doesn't ruin uh, their, uh, their compost, but you know, it is what it is right now. So anyway, let's talk about redemptions today. So these little blue cards right there are the bane of our existence to a degree in the hobby. I personally have no issue with redemptions. I think they are a necessary evil in the process. I think when we're looking at uh, delivering as many autographs as we do in products, uh, as many dual, triple, you know, quadruple autographs uh, and the logistics it takes to have these produced, these are a required uh, evil uh, in the hobby. We have to deal with them but we have to deal with them in the right way. So today I'm gonna to tackle this from a good, bad, and ugly, both from the buying and the selling perspective. So let's look at buying redemptions in the good, bad, and ugly perspective. So when you look at the good of buying redemptions, there are some pretty sweet cards that actually come from redemptions that just are not able to get in the product at pack out. And so here's a couple of good ones here that uh, I've had in redemptions and I don't have this for sale for some reason on eBay, but this is uh, a dual auto of uh, Nico Horner and Miguel Amaya on, uh, from Topps Heritage Miners. I actually pulled two of these last year. I still have this one um, in redemption. And then in honor of uh, day number 20, here is a Don Sutton autograph through, I think this is Heritage High number. I uh, had this redeemed recently and uh, delivered to me. So those are some cool, some cool cards. But but ultimately, redemptions from the good perspective in a product. So it, it's, look, the, the company trying to get us the best card they can for for for, their, for our money. But I think personally, it makes us more accountable uh, from the buying perspective. And so, for example, here in that corner over there, there are sealed cases of product right now. And it's all baseball over there. So there's some high, high, Heritage High Number Series 1 from this year, uh, Heritage from this year. But I know for a fact there, there are redemptions in those products that are expiring, uh, not soon, but in the future. And there is a thread on the, on the blowout forums that list every product uh, that has come out in the past, I think four or five, maybe even 10 years. I'll, I'll, take, I'll show it to you guys here in a second of, the, uh, of what redemptions are in each product. So let's take a look at that real quick. So here's that, that uh, post on the blowout forums. And this actually goes back to 2008 when it comes to baseball, baseball products. But this lists out every single product that has been released over now over a decade. And it shows the players that were uh, as redemptions and when they expired. So for example, I'm thinking about doing a sort of an eight part series uh, on a 2019 Heritage High Number Blaster series, but our video series of me opening uh, the, the blaster boxes up. But when I go over here to Heritage High Number, I know these expire on 7-31-2021. So I've got some time, about a year now, but Tati, Sutton, Albies, Molina, Goldschmidt, Duel, uh, Brandon Rogers and, and Chris Paddock, those are all redemptions in this product. So if you're gonna buy sealed product and hold or, or wait on, you know, maybe for, for it to rise or whatever that could be, take a look at that thread and make sure you're, make, you're having the right, uh, making the right decision when it comes to your money so that you're not holding a product with a high dollar rookie that expires in a year or so. Cause like I know on those heritage high number blaster cases, especially with, with Tatis in it, 
I only have about 14 months before they're going to uh, basically not plummet in value. I mean, they're not that expensive anyway right now, but they're going to be even less valuable when the uh, when the when the expiration when the redemption expires, excuse me. So from the buying perspective, it's all about making us more accountable as a buyer, and we also get really sweet cards when there's redemption. So to me, redemptions are all uh, very very positive for us uh, in general. Now I listed out some really good uh, good things about redemptions. What could be sort of the bad? And I think the bad is 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 one word. It's patient. We have to be patient as collectors. We understand why these cards weren't produced, and it and it's it's difficult in this sports card environment that moves up and down literally by the hour as value of cards go. But we've got to be patient with these cards. So if if you are going to be purchasing a redemption, you've got to be patient. Unless you're purchasing a card that you know is live, you've got to be patient. And there's no reason to continually blow up the card manufacturers. Where's this card? Where's this card? Where's that card? You know, we've just got to be patient. So if you buy that redemption, be patient. It is frustrating, I know, to when you're waiting for a redemption and you see that autograph come out on a sticker or something else in another product down the road. That is very, very frustrating. But there's a reason for that. The company is not doing it to spite you or spite us as a collector group. Something in the contract is making that card come out first before your redemption. So just be patient. That's right now really to me the only sort of bad when it comes to redemption to just test our patient. And in this uh, environment in the world now that's 24 seven, uh, patience is the most challenging thing we deal with as, a, as in the collecting world. Now to the ugly, and it's ugly. When we purchase a redemption, when we pull a redemption or whatever that might be, and the card is never produced. You know, there are a lot of reasons why the card's never produced. Hopefully, it's just because the player refused to sign or just chose not to participate uh, in this and, and were not pay, was not paid money from their contract for their autographs. You know, the only part where it'd be bad on the manufacturer side is if they put a redemption in a product and they didn't have the the contract signed or if it was they were just hoping to have this card made uh in the near future so the ugly part is when that card is just not produced and that's and that's a risk that we're going to take as a buyer when you're buying redemptions i would never pay full market value for a redemption card unless i knew they were alive if we're so what does that mean that means that the ugly nature of redemptions the ones that never get produced actually present us as a as a buyer some great buying opportunities so when you're you're scouring the new release or you're looking on ebay for a card you want and it's redemption when you're looking at what you think that value of the card is i might make an offer of uh, on the redemption of about 60 65 percent of what i feel that card is worth when it's live never pay full market for that card so if you're buying this card at 55 60 percent of the value when it is then live, you've, you've got 40% cushioned, maybe even more by then when it's live. So the ugly nature of redemptions, which sucks when they don't get produced, actually gives us a great buying uh, opportunity on the back end when you're trying to flip it and it may make more money that way. Now, from the selling perspective, what could be a good? There's a little bit of a, of, it's tricky to sell redemptions on uh, eBay, and so I'm going to take this this time to to sort of help you become a better seller of redemptions on eBay, so you're not caught by a buyer who is trying to pull a fast one on you. When you're selling your redemption, please make sure in your title redemption is in the subject, and also not redeemed. I use unredeemed. I'm not sure it's even really even a word, but something to the nature of the player, the card, that it's a redemption and that it's not redeemed. I would also secondarily put it in the description that you are buying the redemption and that you're not buying the card itself. I've seen buyers buy a redemption card where the seller did not put in that it was a redemption. and But look, in the photo, it was very clear that it's a redemption and somehow they won the case that they didn't get the card that they were promised. So they, they won a item not as described case. So. From the good perspective of selling redemptions, it actually makes us a better seller because we have to be more meticulous with our listings. We have to make sure that every all of our T's are crossed and our I's are dotted 
on our listing. So please make sure when you're selling redemptions that you spend an extra couple of seconds validating your listing to make sure they are correct. So what could be bad from the selling perspective of redemption? And this one's a little, it's about twofold process here. Number one, look, I just walked all of your buyers through what I would do from an offer perspective. Look, if that card is worth a thousand dollars in a live perspective and it's a redemption, I might only offer 550 bucks. Cause look, I've got to make sure if this card's never produced, I'm not out that much money, but also it gives me a buying uh, opportunity or selling opportunity on the back end as a buyer when that card is live. So look, you're not going to get full value for that redemption. Secondarily here, you've got to be mindful of when the card expires. The longer that card goes not produced from the expiration or close to the expiration date, the more leverage the buyer has against you. So if you're pulling a redemption now for a product, I would be looking to move that card within the first couple of months. If you wait six, eight, nine months and that card is still not produced, you're just gonna continue to lose value in, in that redemption because it looks more and more like likely that the the, cus, or the, the, uh, the player is not going to sign that card or Tops or, or Panini or whoever it is, is not gonna have that card live in the future. So. If I were you, the bad perspective is is you're, you're up against the time clock here. You've got to sell it quickly, more so than a regular base card, which you can hold for many years, hope, hope it pops up. But if you hold a redemption for too long, you're toast. You've lost almost all of your value. If you try selling a redemption within six months of, of the expiration date and the card isn't live, as a buyer, I'm only offering you 10, 15% of that card because now I'm, I'm, I have full risk here. I am exposed as a buyer to the redemption deadline. And here we are at the ugly when it comes to redemptions from the selling perspective. And it can only be one thing, and that is the dreaded expired redemption. But how as a seller can we avoid this completely? And number one, it's by doing our research buying the correct products in the correct time frame. If you're buying older product, it's gonna have redemptions more than likely. And if they're expired, they're expired. I'd have zero issue with expired redemptions because the company gave us a couple of years, sometimes three years to buy this product to get the card redeemed. But if we as a buying group are being more uh, knowledgeable and we're doing our research, we can completely avoid the expired redemption process. So but it's that simple from the selling perspective when it comes to redemptions. Know your product, buy the right product within the right time frame. do your research, sell redemptions fast, but understand you're not gonna get full market value for redemption because the buyer is taking all of the risk in this situation. Because we know not all redemptions are fulfilled. Some cards just never get produced. So with redemptions as a seller, sell quick and get out from underneath it as fast as you can. Just understand you're not gonna get 100% value on a redemption. So with that guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend collecting and I'll see you tomorrow on day 21.